Today we're going to look at the different types of intervals within seventh chords. If you get confused at any point during this video, I recommend you watch my video about seventh chords and also my interval series. Links for both of those are in the description below. First, we're going to look at major seventh chords. And if you remember, the formula for a major seventh chord is one, three, five, and seven. And what that means exactly is, let's say we're working in the key of C major. Like, let's say I want to know what a C major seven chord is. So I'm going to think about my C, C major scale, okay? So the C major scale is C, D, E, F, G, A, and B, right? And if I number this scale, I'm just going to plug in the notes from the major scale into this formula. So what's the one? The one is C. What's the three? The three is E. What's the five? The five is G. And what's the seven? The seven is B. So therefore, these are the notes in a C major seven chord. That's a shorthand symbol for C major seven, okay? Now let's analyze the intervals within this chord. So if I play the notes C, E, and G, I would just be playing a regular old C major chord, right? So this right here is just a major triad. And I'm gonna use, in this video, the triangle symbol for major, and I'm gonna do a little M for minor, okay? Just so you know. I'm never gonna be using a capital M, because you can write a capital M and that means major too, but just to keep it easier to read, I'm gonna only do a lowercase m for minor and a triangle for major, okay? So C, E, and G, that's a major triad, okay? And let's first think about what are the intervals within a major triad? Well, from C to G, we have a perfect fifth, okay? Perfect fifth. And from C to E, what do we have? We have a major third. So this is a major third, okay? And then from E to G, what do we have? That is a minor third. I'm going to just erase this formula just so that it is a little easier to read, okay? So we have a perfect fifth from the C to the G, and then a major third interval, and then a minor third interval. And every single major triad is built this way, with a major third and then a minor third on top of it, and the distance between the root and then that last note is a perfect fifth, okay? Now seventh chords are just stacks of thirds, and what do I mean by that exactly? I'm saying from C to E we have a third, from E to G we have a third, and from G to B we have a third. So there's there's actually three different types of thirds in this chord, okay? So what's what type of third is it between G and B? It's a major third, okay? And as I said, if this confuses you, go watch my interval series and then this will make a lot more sense. So in a major seventh chord, and it, not just for C major seven, any type of major seventh chord, we have uh, stacks of thirds and the order goes a major third, a minor third, and then a major third. Cool? It's like a little sandwich, major thirds with a minor third in the middle. Now, the last interval I want us to analyze is the interval that goes from C all the way to B, okay? So what is that interval? Do you know? That is a major seventh, okay? So we could think of a major seventh chord as having a major triad, right? And we now know that a major triad has a major third and then a minor third interval, okay? So we have a major triad plus a major seventh. So we're, we have a major, major triad, so C major triad is C, E, G, and then we're popping a major seventh on top of it. And we're always referring back to the root. When I So major seventh is saying it's a major seventh up from C, okay? Now let's also analyze how many half steps are in each of these different types of intervals, okay? So the first one we're gonna look at is a minor third interval, okay? So our minor third equals how many half steps? Well, let's count it on the piano, okay? So we have from E to G, okay? Because this is our minor third. So we have E, and then we need to get to G. So I'm counting one, two, three. That is three half steps, right? So a minor third interval is three half steps, okay? What about a major third interval? Major third equals well, again, let's count it. So let's go from C to E. C to E, okay? So I'm starting on C. One, two, three, four. That is 
four half steps, okay? Four half steps. So we have a minor third is three half steps, major third is four half steps. Now what other intervals do we have in here? We also have a perfect fifth, okay? Let's look at perfect fifth. Um, I'm just gonna erase these so that we have room for perfect fifth. Hope you wrote them down. Oh, by the way, if you want the notes from this video and practice worksheets for this video, I have links for those in the description below. And in that, you can download a printable PDF of the notes from this lesson, as well as a worksheet. So a perfect fifth, how many half steps are in a perfect fifth? Well, we're gonna start, let's see, it's C to G is our perfect fifth, right? So let's, let's count them. So we're starting on C. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven half steps between C and G. Therefore, a perfect fifth is seven half steps. Cool. And last but not least, what about a major seventh? Because we also have a major seventh interval between C and B, right? So major seventh equals, all right, let's see. So from C all the way to B. So we're starting on C. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 half steps. I know it's a little confusing, like, oh my gosh, wait, a seventh has 11 half steps, or hey, 7, 11. Um, or a fifth has seven half steps. It's, it's a little confusing because the numbers don't match up. But I will say that um, you don't have to necessarily have the number of half steps memorized in every interval when you're starting out. So don't go crazy trying to memorize the number of half steps. I'm just telling it to you guys, uh, for those of you who are interested and are ready to start memorizing that, but if you're not ready, don't worry. So the next chord we're gonna analyze is a dominant seven chord, also known as a major minor seventh chord. And for this chord, do you remember what the formula is for this one? We have a one, a three, a five, and then we have a flattened seventh, okay? So what would that be if we were in the key of C major, okay? So let's say I'm asking you, what is a C7 chord? And by the way, if you ever see a dominant seven or a major minor seven chord written in a song chart, it would usually just be written like this, C7. So whenever you see a chord that looks like that, just the note name and then the number seven, it's a dominant seven or a major minor seventh chord, cool? So I'm saying, hey, what are the notes in a C7 chord, okay? And you would just plug this formula into a C major scale. So what's the first note in a C major scale? It's a C, right? Then the, sec the third note in the scale is an E, right? The fifth note is a G. And then the flattened seventh, so what's the seventh note in a C major scale? It's a B, right? And then we're going to flatten that B, and it turns into B flat, okay? So these are the four notes in a C7 chord, or C dominant seven, C major minor seven, all the same, different names, same chord. So now let's analyze the intervals within this chord, okay? So I'm gonna erase this formula so we have a little more, it's a little easier to read, okay? And I'm gonna try switching to a blue pen, see if this makes it a little easier to read. I don't know, we'll find out. So first question I have for you, do we have a major triad or a minor triad up front? When I C, E, and G, is that a major triad or a minor triad? That is a major triad, right? Major triad. And hey, do you remember what the intervals are in a major triad? We went over them just in the last uh, chord we did. So we said in a major triad, what's the distance between the C to the G? That would be a perfect fifth interval, right? Then what would be the interval distance between C and E and then A and G? So remember, it's the same. A major triad is always a stack of, we first have a major third and then we have a minor third. It's always that way. Major, major triad, major chord always has a major third and then a minor third. And just to clarify, I'm only talking about chords in root position right now. So far, this is exactly like our C major seven chord, right? But the only difference is that we have a B flat instead of a B. So that means that this interval is gonna be different, right? From the C all the way to the B flat. What is that interval gonna be? In, with the major seven chord, it was a 
major seventh interval, right? But now since we have a flat, it's a B flat, it's a little bit lower, we are going to have a minor seventh interval, okay? Minor seventh, got it? So you could think of a dominant seven chord or a major minor seventh chord as a major triad plus a minor seventh, okay? Now let's quickly review the number of half steps in each of these different types of intervals. Do you remember how many half steps are in a minor third interval? Three, right? How about a major third interval? Four. What about a perfect fifth? Seven, okay? What about a minor seventh? So this one is the new one, okay? So we could think of it as how many half steps are in a major seventh and then just subtract one. That's one way to find it. So if you remember what that number was in a major seventh interval, the number of half steps, you could just subtract one from that. That's one way. But I'm gonna also show you on the piano from C to B flat. That's a minor seventh. How many half steps we got. So starting on C. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Aha, we've got ten half steps. So a minor seventh equals ten half steps. And if you remember, the major seventh interval has 11 half steps. That's why I said you could just subtract one. So major seventh is 11 half steps. Minor seventh is 10 half steps. Got it? Now, the next type of chord we're going to look at is a minor seventh chord. And if you remember the formula for a minor seventh chord, it is one, flat three, five, and then flat seven, okay? So, what would this be if we were looking for a C minor seven chord? What would be the notes? So, let's think about our C major scale. What's the first note in the C major scale? So I'm trying to figure out a C minor seven chord, okay? First note in C major scale is C, right? What's the flattened third? Well, what's the normal third, not flattened third? C, D, E. The third note in a C major scale is E. And then we just need to flatten that note, so it's going to be E flat, right? What about the fifth note in C major scale? It's a G, right? What about the flattened seventh? It's B flat. Cool. So I'm going to erase the formula and let's look at the intervals inside of this chord. So what kind of triad do we have in these first three notes? Is this a major triad or a minor triad? It is a minor triad, okay? Because remember, a major triad was C, E, G. Since we have a flattened third, it turns into a minor triad. So a minor triad always has a flattened third. And actually, that third degree, when I say third degree, I mean that third degree of the scale. Having a flattened third in your chord is what really uh, tells us that it's a minor chord, okay? Because, you know, we have all types of chords, but a lot of chords are either major or minor. Not all of them, but a lot of them. And so it's that flattened third is what tells us it's a minor chord. If it is a not flattened third, if it's just a normal third, then it is a major chord. Cool? So that third is really important because it tells us this very important information about the chord. It tells us if it's a major or a minor chord. So this is a minor triad, okay? Now, what is the interval distance between C and G? It's been the same distance for all the other chords we've done too so far, right? This is still a perfect fifth. Perfect fifth. Okay, so we still got a perfect fifth. Then what about in a minor triad? What are these two thirds? Because now it's a little different, right? Before when it was a major triad, we had, what was it? We had a major third and then a minor third. Well, now we have, it flips them around. This is a minor third and a major third, okay? So C to E flat is a minor third, and E flat to G is a, that's a triangle, major third, okay? Now, what is the interval distance from C all the way to B flat? It's gonna be some type of seventh, right? Remember what it is? It's a minor seventh, okay? So, all right, minor seventh, okay? So, we could think of a minor seven chord as being a minor triad plus a minor seventh, right? 
And last but not least, what is the distance between the G and the B flat? This distance is a minor third. So for a minor seventh chord, we have stacks of thirds, and we have a minor third, a major third, and then another minor third, okay? And you could think of the chord overall as being a minor triad plus a minor seventh, okay? Now, there aren't any new interval distances in this chord, I don't think, that we haven't already been over as far as half steps are concerned, like number of half steps. So I will just quiz you then. So how many half steps are in a minor third? Three. That one's nice and easy because it's a third and the answer is three. Minor third has three half steps. What about a major third? That one has four. What about a perfect fifth? That has seven half steps. And last but not least, what about a minor seventh? So from C to B flat, that is 10 half steps. Cool. Now we're gonna look at a half diminished seven chord, okay? So if you remember the formula for a half diminished seven chord, it's one, flat three, flat five, and flat seven. So if we were looking for a C half diminished seven chord, what would our notes be? So C half diminished seven. This is a symbol for half diminished right there, okay? Well, the one would be C, right? What about the flattened third? That would be E flat, right? Now what about the flattened fifth? This one is the first time we have a flattened fifth in any of these chords. Well, what's the fifth normally? The fifth is a G, right? The fifth note in a C major scale, C, D, E, F, G. We're just gonna flatten that note and it becomes G flat. G flat, okay. And what about the flattened seventh? That is still B flat. Cool. So for these first three notes, is this a, what type of triad is this? Is this a major triad, a minor triad, something else? Do you have any idea? If you watch my video about triads, I do have a video all about triads, we actually go over this, so then you would know the answer. Um, I will link that as well in the description below. But even if you haven't watched it, what is this? Do you know? This is what we call a diminished triad, okay? And a triad is just a chord with three notes in it, okay? Triad, tri, that makes sense, right? So C, E flat, and G flat is a diminished triad. Whenever we have a one, a flat three, and a flat five, that's like the formula for a diminished triad. Cool. So now let's look at the intervals within the diminished triad, okay? So from the C to the G flat, what is this interval called? So all the other ones before was, were C to G, and those were perfect fifths. But now it's not a perfect fifth because we have a G flat now instead of a G. So what is this? This is a diminished fifth, okay? So I'm gonna write diminished fifth, okay? Now, what is the distance between C and E flat? It's the same as the other chords that had C and E flat. We have a minor third. Now, what about the distance between E flat and G flat? Okay, this is a new one because we, we, for our first time having a G flat, this is also a minor third, okay? So in a diminished triad, we always have two sets of minor thirds. So it's a minor third stacked on top of a minor third, okay? Now that we're done analyzing the triad, let's look at G flat to B flat. What is that distance? That is a major third, okay? So we have two minor thirds and then a major third in any half diminished seven chord, okay? We have a diminished triad. And then the last interval we need to analyze is from C all the way to B flat. What is that interval? We've done this one before in the other chords. C to B flat is a minor seventh, okay? So that means in a half diminished seven chord, we have a diminished triad and plus a minor seventh. Make sense? Now let's go over the number of half steps in each of these different types of intervals, okay? So we've already done a bunch of these. How many half steps are in a minor third? Three half steps, right? That one's easy, three, three. What about in a major third? Four half steps. What about in a diminished fifth? Now this is a new one. We haven't gone over a diminished fifth yet. Now you could just 
remember what the number was for a perfect fifth and then subtract one from that. So we could do that. How many half steps were in a perfect fifth? Do you remember? Seven, right? So if we subtract one, it turns into six. Therefore, a diminished fifth has six half steps. And let's analyze it on the keyboard. So from C to G flat, we're gonna count the number of half steps. So C, here's our starting point. One, two, three, four, five, six. Aha, uh -huh. see? Six, six half steps from C to G flat. So diminished fifth has six half steps. Fifth has six half steps. I'm just writing half steps. Six high schools, no, it's six half steps. That's what that stands for. So diminished fifth has six half steps. And then last but not least, how many half steps are in a minor seventh? Minor seventh has 10 half steps and that's it. Now, somebody wrote me a good question as a comment, and it's something actually I think we should just quickly go over. They asked, how come when you're counting the distance between one note and another note, the number of half steps, how come, so look here on my keyboard. So I was counting the, you know, the distance between C and G flat. When I started counting the number of half steps, I didn't count that first C as one of the half steps. I started here. I said, that's one half step, two, three, so I went, I started on C and then I went one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So how come I didn't count that first note? How come I didn't count that as one of those half steps? They said, how can you do that? But then when you're looking at scale degrees or something like that, like when I'm saying, okay, you know, here's our C major scale and we're thinking of it as numbers. Okay, well, now you are looking at the first note and you are counting it as a one. You're not counting one, two, three. You know, with the half steps, we started on this, the second note to start counting. Well, that's because when we're counting the distance, like of half steps, we're, you could think of it as measuring something with a ruler, right? So if I were measuring something with a ruler, let's say here's my ruler, this is not gonna be accurate, but let's say here is, uh, this is like my one inches, two inches, three inches, and four inches, okay? I'm gonna line up my object, like let's say I'm, I wanna measure this little eraser, okay? I'm gonna line up my object here, right? I line it up at the very end of the ruler and it says, okay, it's about two inches, right? As I said, this is not accurate, but you get what I'm doing. Well, we didn't start measuring it, like we didn't put the one here, right? And then the two here and then the three here and then the four here, right? Because we're measuring a distance. So that's, I think, I think that's sort of uh, the best way to think about it, okay? So when we're measuring half steps, you could think of it as sort of almost like a unit of measurement, okay? And whenever we are measuring something, you count, this is like the first inch, right? The second inch, the third inch. Same thing with half steps. This is the first half step, the second half step, the third half step. Make sense? And then when we're analyzing scale degrees, like this, well, then it, we do need to count the first, first note as the one. We're thinking, what's the third note in the scale? It's a, it's a different thing. So I think um, normally, you know, you would always put the one as the first note in most things that I can that I can think of right now. The only exception is that when we're counting like a distance of half steps or whole steps or something like that, we don't start with the note we're starting on. We we start counting on that second note we get to because it's like using a ruler. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, we only have two more chord types that we're going to go over. Um, this next one is a fully diminished seventh chord. So do you remember what the formula is for a fully diminished seventh chord? We have a one, a flat three, a flat five, and then a double flattened seventh, okay? That's the formula. So if we were doing a C major scale, or let's say I wanted, to, I wanted to know what a C diminished seven chord is. That's a symbol for diminished seven, okay? What would it be? So the one is C, right? That one's easy. The flattened third is E flat, right? Flattened fifth is G flat. Okay, what about double flattened seventh? You know what this one is? This is uh, B double flat, okay? And just to show you quickly on the piano what that looks like, so here's my C, here's my E flat, here's my G flat, and then B double flat, so here's B. If I flatten it once, it's there, and if I flatten it twice, we're double flattened, it goes here. This note is also A. A and B double flat are enharmonic equivalents, which is our two, uh, two note names for the same pitch, okay? So this is our 
fully diminished seventh chord, okay? So I'm just gonna erase this so we have more room. Okay, let's look at the intervals inside of this chord. So first, tell me, what kind of triad is this? Is it a major, minor, or diminished? It's a diminished triad, right? Because we have a flattened third and a flattened fifth. Whenever you have a one flat three flat five, it's always gonna be a diminished triad. And what is the distance between C to G flat? What kind of interval? What is that interval distance between C and G flat? It's a fifth, what kind of fifth? It's a diminished fifth. What about between C and E flat? What is that? That is a, do you remember? Minor third. We had a diminished triad in the previous chord, so this should all be the same. A minor third, and then from E flat to G flat, that's, what is that? That's also a minor third, right? Now, this is where it gets a little different. What is the interval distance between G flat and B double flat? That is also a minor third. So, as you can see, a fully diminished seventh chord is three stacks of minor thirds, okay? It's all minor thirds, all minor thirds all the way, okay? And last but not least, what is the interval distance between C and B double flat? So this one is also gonna be new. So from C all the way to B double flat, what is that? That is a diminished seventh, okay? So you could think of a fully diminished seventh chord as being like a diminished triad with a diminished seventh on top, got it? Okay, now let's quickly review the number of half steps in each of these different types of intervals. I'm gonna scramble them up a little bit. So how many half steps are in a diminished fifth? Do you remember how many were in a perfect fifth? Perfect fifth has seven, right? So a diminished fifth has six. So six half steps in a diminished fifth. What about a minor third? How many half steps were in a minor third? Three half steps, right? And last but not least, how many half steps are in a diminished seventh, okay? So do you remember how many half steps a minor seventh had? Minor seventh had 10 half steps, right? So a diminished seventh would just be one less than that. So that means a diminished seventh has nine half steps. And we can count on the keyboard if we want to. So from C to B double flat. So we're starting on C. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine nine half steps. So diminished seventh, nine half steps. Okay, and last but not least, we have a minor major seventh chord, okay? So what is the formula for a minor major seventh? Do you remember? It's one, flat three, five, and seven, okay? So if I were had to figure out what a C minor major seventh chord is, that's one way to write that chord. What would it be? What would the notes be? The one would be C, right? What would be the flattened third? The flattened third would be E flat, right? What about the fifth? G. And then the seventh? B. This one's not too crazy, right? No double flats in this one. <laughs> so let's analyze the intervals now. So first let's see what kind of triad do we have? Is this a major triad, minor triad, or diminished triad? This is a minor triad, right? And what is the interval distance between C and G? It's a perfect fifth. Okay, what about the interval distance between C and E flat? So this is just, we're, again, we're just analyzing a normal old minor triad. In a minor triad, the distance between the first two notes is a minor third, right? And then the distance between the next two notes is a major third. Cool. Now, what about the distance between G and B? This is a major third, got it? And last but not least, what is the distance between C and B? That is a major seventh. So we could think of a minor major seventh chord as a minor triad plus a major seventh, okay? And this chord, it's really in the name, right? Minor major seven, it's a minor chord with a major seventh. Minor triad, minor chord with a major seventh, right? Minor, major seventh. So pretty straightforward. And we already went over the number of half steps in all these different interval types, but let's just do it again one last time just because. So how many half steps are in a major seventh? Let's start with a major seventh. Do you remember? It is 11, okay, 7-11. What about a perfect fifth? 
It has seven half steps. What about a minor third? Three half steps. And what about a major third? It has four half steps. And that's all guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, say hey, ask any questions. Uh, it helps a lot when you guys do that. And I love hearing from all of you. Um, if you found this video helpful, but you wanna practice and reinforce what we learned in this video, as I said earlier, I have printable PDF worksheets uh, that have quizzes uh, so you can review what we've learned in this video. I also have a printable document of everything we learned in this video and laid out nicely and visually for you. I also have many other music theory worksheets and quizzes to practice all the stuff we learn on this channel. So the link for that is in the description below. Check it out. Before I say farewell, let's just play through each of these uh, different types of seventh chords on the keyboard just because it's always good to listen to them Make sure we're actually playing what we're talking about. So first we have a C major seven chord Then we have a C dominant seven chord Then we have a C minor seven chord Then we have a C half diminished seventh chord. Then we have a C fully diminished seventh chord. And last but not least, we have a C minor major seventh chord. And let's also quickly listen to some of these intervals and what they sound like, okay? So from C to E, that is a, do you remember what C to E is? It's a major third, right? So that's what a major third sounds like, okay? And then from E to G, that is a minor third. So that's what a minor third sounds like. And then from C to B, that's a major seventh. Oh, and I forgot, from G to B, is that a major third or a minor third? That's a major third, okay? Perfect fifth from C to G, perfect fifth, and then from C to B is a major seventh. Now let's listen to what a minor seventh sounds like from C to B flat. That's a minor seventh, okay? Now let's listen to what C to E flat sounds like. So is this a, is that a minor third or a major third? That's a minor third, right? And from E flat to G, what is that? That's a major third from E flat to G, okay? Then from G to B flat, what is that? That is a minor third, okay? Now from E flat to G flat, what is that? Is that a minor third or a major third? That's a minor third, okay? What about from G flat to B flat? What kind of third is that? Just listening to based on the sound, what do you think that is? It's a major third, okay? So this is a minor third. And this is a major third. So major third is a slightly bigger distance than a minor third. And from C to G flat, what is that interval distance? That is a diminished fifth, okay? This is also called the tritone, okay? Now, what about the distance between G flat and B double flat? What type of third is that? Just based on the way it sounds. That's A minor third. What about from, just to quiz you, what about from C to E flat? What is this? What does that sound like? It's a minor third. What about E flat to G? What does that sound like? That's a major third. Okay, and what about from C to B double flat? What is that? That's a diminished seventh, okay? It should sound exactly the same as a major sixth.
And now let's listen to the triads. This is a C major triad. This is a C minor triad. This is a C diminished triad. And we'll end just back on our C major triad. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new to my channel. I post one video a week and I would love to have you here. If you want to practice what we learned in this video or you want it all written out in a very nice, easy to read way, um, check out my worksheets in the description below. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up, leave a comment, uh, share this video with your friends and family. That is it. Thank you guys so much and see you next week.